Hey, Prime members, you can listen to Watch What Crappens ad-free on Amazon Music. Download the app today. Ronnie, you know what I love? What? I love a good mobile game. They're such a good way to pass the time, you know? They really are. You know, I'm scrolling on my phone all the time. And for this new year, I'd really rather scroll doing something fun. We have been playing a lot of a game called Love and Pies, which is a merge two game where you are basically merging things like cookies into cookies to make cakes or batter into batter to make cookies. You're also making your cafe look really cute and fun. <laughs> yeah. And you know, we love building things. We love love baking things, and we definitely love hot guys. There are really hot firefighters in this game. There's hot firefighters in this game. <laughs> in the game, you play as Amelia, who's taken over the old family cafe, but it just burned down when you got there. So like, you play through these games, and then you unlock tools to renovate your cafe into its former glory. So for a tasty mix of love and drama, download Love and Pies for free today. That's Love and Pies, free to download in the App Store or Google Play. Life is short, and it's full of a lot of interesting questions. What does happiness really mean? How do I get the most out of my time here on Earth? And what really is the best cereal? These are the questions I seek to resolve on my weekly podcast, Life is Short with Justin Long. Follow Life is Short wherever you get your podcasts. You can also listen ad-free on the Amazon Music or Wondery app. Well, hello and welcome to Watch What Crap Ends, a podcast for all that crap we love to talk about on Ye Old Bravs. I'm Ronnie. Guess who I'm with? He's gorgeous. He's smart. He never even farts. It's Ben. It's Ben. Hi, Ben. Welcome Hi. to your show. Well, why are you peddling such lies at the top of our week? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> just take the W, you know? <laughs> just... Okay, I'll take the W. Sounds good. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the show. I'm a little under the weather today because I hugged some something. I hugged somebody or something that tainted me this weekend <laughs> at our live shows. But I'll tell you what, it was worth it. We finally got the Cheater brand off the ground, the Cheater brand Tua, and uh, it was just so much fun. Thank you to everyone who came out. Of course, it was a fucking natural weather disaster with Austin losing its electricity, freezing over at the freeway, everything closing down here. Um, and you guys still came out, and we had a great fucking time, I have to say. It was so fun. Dallas, everybody was so sweet there. So uh, thanks so much, everybody, for coming out. You made our little our little dreams come true. Yeah, it was really a wonderful two days. Also, um, I feel like let's not um, let's not forget about the wild card factor in here, which is that we did go to Bucky's. So it's very possible that you got whatever you got at Bucky's. So <laughs> you never know. There's a lot of stuff happening in that place. Yeah, but, um, it was such a fun time going back on tour. And um, in case you guys didn't see the. Uh, the latest update, we are streaming the crappies, okay? It is happening. So if you can't make it to L.A., then don't worry about it because you can watch it on Moment House, okay? The link is on our website, watchacrappens.com. It'll be just like last year. You can log on. You can watch. And it's also going to be up for like a week after the show. So uh, now everyone can come to the crappies, even if you're not there, you know, physically. So but you, you should be there your... physically because it'll be great. Right. You can get your link. Uh, the links for tickets are at watchwhatcrappens.com with all the dates. Our next dates are in Phoenix, Arizona, 223. And they're going to be at CB Live. We're going to do a recap, but we're also going to have some, you know, the ceremony in a ceremony held the night before. Uh, little crappies for you guys in Phoenix. Um, and then we're going to do the real crappies, Los Angeles uh, 2023 Golden Crappies at the Wiltern Theater on the 24th. So get your live tickets and your streaming tickets at watchwhatcrappens.com and all of our dates. We've got another 18, 19 dates uh, this season. So go over there. Also, for bonus episodes and um, uh, videos, go to Crappens on Demand. That's our Patreon. So just go to patreon.com slash watchwhatcrappens. All of our bonuses, etc are there. And now for the Real Housewives of Potomac. I love this music. I love it. I'm going to miss this music the most out of all of the housewives. 
I know uh, the the go go beat. It's so good. Um, but yeah, this is the season finale, a super size season finale uh, that was also also tinged with light scandal. I guess it's more like the scandal was afterwards. Did you watch? I actually watched uh, Robin on Watch What Happens Live. I'm assuming you watched it also, of right? Of course. Yes, you fucking liar, Robin. Oh, my God. I felt for Rob. I mean, I felt for her in a way. Um, what did you think of it? Well, uh, she was sort of like a deer in the headlights for people who don't know. Uh, obviously on Potomac, she denied that Juan was ever in any sort of relationship, yada, yada, yada. And then, um, on, then on reasonably shady, she teased the fact that, oh, actually I knew about it and I'm going to give all the details on my Patreon. So Andy had her on and, uh, she was on with Ebony, Ebony K. Williams. And he's like, all right, well, Robin, uh, we were going to celebrate your wedding, but instead we're going to talk about some other things. And then they drop the lighting to blue. Like, they just change the lighting like it's who wants to be a millionaire. And Andy just basically starts going. <laughs> yeah, it was like with the way the lights all just so like <laughs> the, the spotlights all shine down on the stage. So, uh, yeah, he really went in on her and uh, she had terrible answers. Like, she really, she was not prepared for it. Yeah, I didn't feel like he went on, in on her that hard. I mean, first of all, her story started in the weirdest place. Okay, so let's see. Do we need to set this up for anybody? You guys all know this happened, right? Ben just set up, set up what basically happened. But yeah. um, this wasn't even the same story as the woman in Georgetown. So I don't know why Robin even admitted this in the first place. Because it's a different woman, which makes it worse for Robin. But like... She doesn't realize that. It's like, look, it's he wasn't with a woman in Georgetown. He was he wasn't cheating with somebody from Canada. But it looks yeah. like they were cheating, but they weren't cheating. So where her story, story starts, yeah, it starts with, well, he was talking to this woman from Canada. And I guess they were just friends, even though she didn't say that, or why he was talking to her, and Andy didn't ask. Okay? Mm -hmm. So we just know she, that Juan is talking to some lady. So then, for whatever reason, Robin says, <laughs> this lady decides to come to Maryland. Whatever reason. I have no idea. So she comes. She gets to the hotel. Apparently, she's dating a Baltimore Ravens player, is what she's supposedly told Juan. She goes to the casino. She loses her wallet. So she gets a hold of Juan and says, I can't pay for the hotel because I lost my wallet. Girl, you didn't pay for your hotel when you got to the casino? What? Yeah. You didn't have a reservation with your name on the thing? Robin couldn't just call the casino and get you a room, even though that makes no sense anyway why he would do that. So it's just a big fat lie. He got caught. It makes me feel bad that people are like pummeling Robin when she's the one that got cheated on. But after watching this season, and especially this episode where she's just laughing at Karen and trying to get Karen out of this, this huge cheater and this and that, and all the ladies, all the, you know, Giselle, Robin, and Ashley, all the ones who are constantly cheated on, trying to make everybody come down to their level of misery, it's just really gross, you know? So I don't think Andy really gave it to her too hard at all. He let her get away with everything. Well, I think, like, for, like, an Andy Cohen kind of interview, considering that he, that's... Because there was watch what happens live, it was a much more aggressive line of questioning than I think that she was expecting, and she didn't have great answers. Um, and she seemed kind of, she seemed kind of uh, surprised by it. And I mean, I think what Andy was really after was not so much the details of the cheating, but more like why did you not do, why did you not say this on the show? And then he's like. Well, you know, you go after, you know, plenty of people like Karen uh, for cheating, and yet you have this here, and you don't even, you don't even mention it. She goes, oh, well, I, I just didn't think of it. Like, it wasn't, it wasn't on my mind, because it happened, like, two years ago. And it's like, yeah, but, like, you guys were talking, like, Karen brought up this woman, and she goes, well, that was a woman in Georgetown, and Juan never had that. So, like, it's just not something that, like, was even part of a story, so why would I volunteer myself? And he's like, no, it's not, like, about being pick me. It's saying, like, it's you being basically open with the audience. And uh, she basically, she tried to kind of do a quasi-defense that, oh, she just didn't think of it. But, um, yeah, it, it was already taken care of, so why bring it up? And to that, I say, why would she bring it up? If no one else is conf confronting her about it, why would she be like, Juan cheated on me? I wouldn't. People, Andy, people don't just want to come on your show and look stupid.
Okay. Like I know that that's what you want them to do. <laughs> why would someone voluntarily do that? That's, that's insane. I can see why she wouldn't want to do it. Um, but you know, coming after everybody as she does all the time is ridiculous. But, and she's a hypocrite. And I'm really hoping that they set this up because I, the episode went so fucking long. First of all, it was a really long episode of the regular show, not watch what happens live. But I thought, God, I hope this is Robin's ending because I thought for a minute, um, Oh, they cut. They got so mad at Robin, they cut out the wedding stuff because it was mm-hmm. over. I mean, it had been on for an hour, and it seemed like it was over. And then they cut to this really long Robin wedding scene, and yeah. um, I, I'm hoping that they did that, even though they're furious with Robin right now. I hope they did that to give her an ending and just get rid of there her. There are people who are speculating, but although sometimes Bravo will give us a fake ending, like with Vanderpump Rules two years ago. But um, the other thing is, though. I agree that why would anyone just volunteer, especially on Potomac, where, you know, you've got people like Ashley um, and Mia who are just sitting there with forks and knives ready to just like to to dive in and tear you up and and eat you up, eat you up and spit out the bones. Like, why would you volunteer? Which I think is a fair that's a that's totally a fair thing to say. But at the same time, she then said, oh, but I will volunteer this on my Patreon. And so, uh, that bothered people, you know, and, and that was, that felt disingenuous. It felt like a betrayal of her duties as a reality star, which is funny that we, we, we say like duties of reality star, but there are duties of a reality star. That is a job. And you are supposed to be transparent because like the entire, the entire reality genre experiment relies on people giving themselves over to it and not trying to self-produce. And so it's basically like she self-produced ultimately. And that's kind of what I think Andy was trying to, and it was still boring. Out. I mean, my God, this is. The I know. First I kept time, on looking at my know? phone. I was like, "Wait, I should be listening to this." Yeah, this is like the first because Robin. You know, I'm up and down with Robin in general, but I usually don't mind her that much. I get the need for kind of a boring one, you know, on the shows. <laughs> but she's just bad. I mean, at this point, it's just bad. And this season finale with everybody just falling all over each other with all their storylines failing and blowing up right in their faces was sad. It was hard to watch. Ashley chasing Chris around is failing. Ashley chasing Karen around, failing. I mean, because even if Karen did all that stuff, which I believe that she probably did, I don't care. It makes, like, Karen cooler in my eyes. I think Karen's married to some old rich dude and off-blowing people in bathrooms. Like, to me, that makes Karen... Yeah, to me, it makes Karen more fabulous. So, I think these ladies just all failed multiple times. And it's time for a shake-up. Robin, for sure. It's hard to imagine that show without Giselle. I doubt Giselle will go. No um, way. I would never get rid of Giselle. I mean, I I don't know if I'm sold on getting rid of Robin. Um, you know, I would I would be okay if she were a friend of, but I think I've had a lot of seasons where I've really loved Robin. I thought Robin was actually kind of a voice of reason. She just sort of was the one rolling the eyes for us and everything. And she just had a really bad season. Like, this was her bad season. And I'm not sure I need to throw the baby out with the bathwater in this case. Um, Hey, the baby is the one who made the bathwater dirty, if you think about it. Always throw the the fucking baby out with the bathwater. Who do you think dirtied (laughs) the bathwater in the first place? Fuck that baby. Well, I don't know. I mean, I, I do have to say, I do enjoy the Giselle and Robin friendship. Um, I would give her another season to write the write the course. Because, you know, Candace, she had a really good season, amazingly. She finally had her good season. So, um, I'm not sure I'm throwing out Robin just yet. But I think she might be, like, on probation for me. She might be, uh, she might be in, like, the, the, the penalty box or the... The danger zone, or whatever metaphor you want to use, but I'm not, I don't. Well, in my eyes, this was Robin's good season. <laughs> this was <laughs> a season Robin got off the bench and actually did some stuff. Um, it was just bullshit, you know. And the, the, by the end of it, it was just all bullshit, all of them. And I don't want to watch another season full of bullshit, you know. These shows are fun. I get they're supposed to be petty and this and that. I don't like just making stuff up, you know. I've said it a million times. It has to come from someplace real. This is just, yeah, you're right. 
This is just well, a bunch of made up crap. Or Ashley, well, get that's, rid of that's Ashley Robin's at this problem. point too. Like no, Ashley's I, just I coming and Ashley. coming and coming for people. Nothing she said was true this year. I don't even know that she's really leaving that that Gollum guy. I don't know. It's like what's the point? You know, she's just coming here to. Ru- they're just they're all coming trying to ruin each other's lives, and it's all the bitter ones who had all this shit done to them already, and they seem to have this attitude like this happened to us, so now you guys have to experience it. Or it's like yeah, well, you know, I think that um, Robin's biggest problem is that she. She doesn't seem to have a lot going on in her life that's terribly interesting. And if you said she should be fired based on that, I would have a hard time defending that because, um, you know, like the Robin and Juan thing, not only has it gone on for so long and always been boring, but now it's actually just over. So there's nothing there's nothing there. I mean, I'm not too terribly invested in the ups and downs of Embellish. So there's not that. Uh, I mean, there is this terrible the Juan Dixon of scam. Embellish, LOL. <laughs> <laughs> the downs and downs, but there, I mean, there is this terrible Juan Dixon scandal, which might be interesting to see unfold. Well, she won't talk about it, but she's not going to no, say anything wouldn't. about it. So, so what's the point? Based you know? on that, like for sure, she's definitely in danger. I think I also suspect that um, I don't know. I don't think Wendy is going to come back, at least not as a full time. Um, I really like Wendy. We make fun of her a lot, but I really, really like Wendy a lot. But um, she felt a little periphery this season, even though she was in the biggest fight of the year. It felt like she was not really in the mix, maybe because she was too busy. She had too many things on her plate. But um, I would not be surprised if she got downgraded to friend of or just off the show entirely. Um, And I know a lot of people don't like Mia because Mia really there's Mia is like a full fabrication. Like she is created in a lab to be a reality star, to come on this show, to, to just be as messy as possible. I've enjoyed Mia, but, uh, you know, I understand if she would have to go because, um, there's like an empty, empty hollowness to her. I don't know. I would say they're going to keep Mia because of all the family stuff that happened where they stole uh, quote air quotes, by the way, stole, her and Gordon's empire, crack the back mm-hmm. empire. And uh, so I think they'll have her back. Also, the way that she came through at the end and carried the storyline, even when Karen made everyone else drop it. Mm-hmm. And she like came, she just came on the field and was like, well, actually, Karen, it was the owner of the Chili's who said that you fucked him on the, you know, the, the grilled cheese sandwich grill or whatever the fuck it was. Like she was really committed to just carrying that bag all the way through. So I think that means something to them. She's got a good storyline coming up and she kind of found a balance between being just evil and, and stupid and kind of funny towards Does the end. Does there have to be a balance between those two things? <laughs> I do. I think there does. Because, <laughs> be, you know, when the stuff happened with Wendy both. and Mia earlier in the season, Mia was just a complete villain. Everyone hated Mia. They were coming for her so hard online. Right, rightly so, I think. I think that she kind of came back pretty well from that, considering, you know, yeah, like the did. second half of the season. So I don't know. I, I have a feeling it's not really what I want. I just think that she'll be back. I think that they'll probably friend Wendy and Robin because Wendy, you know, no one likes Wendy. That's it. And it doesn't mean the, I don't mean the audience. I think the audience does like Wendy. I like Wendy. We both like her, but I don't think yeah. the cast likes Wendy. Nobody I get likes that. Wendy, I think that's a really you know? good point. I don't. I think the cast does not love Wendy. And I, I think that ultimately, if you ask me, I love this whole cast. I would actually keep it entirely the same. But um, I do get the sense there are rumblings in the Bravo world among the, among the fans about the show's not good, whatever. And whenever those rumblings happen, you would sort of have to nip it in the bud. And so otherwise things go haywire. But I also think that like our Bravo community, we are really good. For like, if we're unsatisfied with something one season, we just chuck the whole thing out and then things, things can be get really bad from there. So I always feel like we should always proceed with like a little bit of caution. I think maybe the best, I'm acting like I'm actually in the meeting of what to do with Potomac, but I think, I think you're right. I think Robin goes down to friend at least for one season as like a warning shot to be like, Hey, you better get your shit together. Otherwise next stop is you're off the show. And Wendy, I think they, I think they actually just they get rid of Wendy and then they put on just a brand new person. Yeah. They'll need to. And they're also going to need to get rid of Shasha. Cause what's the point? I, I don't know. I, I, okay. I, I told this to you when we're driving to Dallas, I have to come out of the Shasha closet. I'm really enjoying Shasha this season. I don't know what it is. You know, she tries, she's thirsty. I think I'm the only one 
And you know what? I don't care because that's what being a Bravo fan is. I just see this rumpled lady just trying her best to be in the mix. And I'm just like, I am just deeply entertained by her. Just, you know, exhausted, sweating, <laughs> you know, whatever hairstyle she had in the morning has long gone away. And she's just like, I have something to say. I don't know. I'm after all these years, all these years of disliking Shasha. I don't know what happened. I like Shasha now. Well, I've always loved making fun of her. I'm just saying, like, if we were doing the casting on the show, I would get rid of Shasha. Well, well she, they does, she doesn't Shasha. bring anything except crap. She brings nothing but crap, you know? All of this thing, all of this was to find out that Karen blew people in the bathroom. Was there one surprised person? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like, was there one surprised audience member that was like, Karen giving someone a blowjob in a bathroom? Hell no. I mean, Karen became famous at 60, or at like 50, what, 50... Three. 59! She oh, got a new face, new boobs, a new body. Of course she's out there fucking. What else are you going to do with it, you know? It's like you got a new car, you're never going to drive it around. You know, you go. You drive that car. So I well, think that was Shasha's big load that she had to blow, and it was just a, it was a sad, sad I think she'll load. be Sad loads. Hashtag I think sad Shasha loads. will be an intermittent friend of, like we saw about two years ago. She'll come on here and there, appear at parties. I think if Robin is, the, is a friend of, she'll be the friend of, because the show is not had a great track record of cultivating interesting friend ofs. Uh, you have Jacqueline, you have what's her face. Um, uh, she was in the, she was actually on tonight's episode. Um, she was on a uh, uh, Scala, you know, they have not had amazing friends ofs. So if Robin is a friend of that, I think that would, you know, I don't know if they need Robin and Sharice, but I guess we'll just have to see. But in the meantime, why don't we get into the recap of this finale episode, which despite everything, I mean, I, I was, I thought it was funny. These, I mean, I think these women, I think these women, I think the show is still a top tier Bravo show. Um, I think this show has, um, this show, well, I was going to say this show has really proven to be the, uh, what's the word? Like the, 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 like the, they took the man, they took the torch from, from Roni. And I feel like Potomac still has it, although Miami kind of has taken it now from Potomac. Why? Let's just get into it. It's time for a commercial. It's time for a crappens commercial. It's really hard to stick with working out. Oh my God, it's really, really hard. Me too, and it's a new year, and it's really time to get our butts in shape. And you know what? Peloton makes it really easy. Oh my God, you know I'm a big Peloton fan, because Peloton is more than just a bike. You probably already know that Peloton makes bikes, but what you may not know is that they also make treadmills. And no, not all treadmills are the same. With the Peloton Tread, you can seamlessly adjust your speed, and it can automatically adjust your incline while you're taking a class so you never break your stride. I have used a Peloton tread and I can I can attest that this is what happens. It is a lovely, lovely experience. And by the way, it's also not that big. I was shocked by how compact it is. Because nothing gets you moving like the perfect song, Peloton offers the best playlists with a variety of genres. Whether you're looking for EDM, 90s pop, something soulful, Peloton has music to fit your mood. It's fitness for all levels. Like, you don't have to be a super athlete to enjoy a Peloton because there are classes for every level. Whether you're squeezing in a power walk or training for a marathon, Peloton can help you achieve your fitness goals. Try Peloton Tread risk-free with a 30-day home trial. New members only. Not available in remote locations. See additional terms at onepeloton.com slash home dash trial. Meet Jill Evans. Jill's got it all. A big house, fast car, two kids, and a great career. But Jill has a problem. When it comes to love, Jill can never seem to get things right. And then along comes Dean. I can't believe my luck. Whoa, I hit the jackpot. It looks like they're going to live happily ever after. But on Halloween night, things get a little gruesome. This is where the shooting happened outside a building society in New Romney. It's thought the 42-year-old victim was killed after he opened fire on police. And Jill's life is changed forever. From Wondery and Novel comes Stolen Hearts, a story about a cop who falls in love with a man who is not all he seems to be. I'm Kerry Godleyman. Follow Stolen Hearts on Amazon Music or wherever you get your podcasts. You can listen early and ad-free by subscribing to Wondery Plus in Apple Podcasts or the Wondery app. So we open with um, the future of men in Potomac, Baby Dean, 
going to a restaurant for a mommy date, acting like kind of all the men on this show. No, I don't want to. Blah! You mean doing what he wants and exposing parts of his body to the public? <laughs> yes. Yeah. You have to leave your shirt on to go in the restaurant. He's like, how dare you? Or don't want to wear a shirt or shan't wear a shirt. How about that, mother? No shit, no shoes, no attitude, mother. Mm. She's like, yeah, you can't take your shirt off at the restaurant. This isn't a steak and lobster joint. <laughs> so they go in and get a table for two. And she's like, Deanie, Deanie, isn't this awesome? He's like, no, it's not. To me, this looks like a land of shirted people. I want no part of it. <laughs> Why do you take me to this generic restaurant where the best thing they have on the menu is a Caesar salad? Do I look like an average plebeian? I don't think so. I want mac and cheese. Wah, wah. <laughs> wah, 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 wah. So the waitress comes over and she's wearing a shirt that says, shine on. And she's like, hi. Okay, just die. I'm on Dean's team now because this is like, your positive <laughs> attitude is offensive, but the shirt on top of it, why don't you just beat me in the head with it? You know, like, I don't want to wear a shirt. Yeah, Ash- Get out of my face. She's like, do you want to start with Ash- anything? He's like, take off your shirt, you cretin. <laughs> Starting a new trend in dining. It's called shirts off, food in. So uh, then Ashley's like, um, can I have some tea? I'm just like not feeling the best. And the waitress, you can see the waitress is like, oh, great. Thank, thanks for coming into our establishment today. <laughs> yeah, I so, know. Uh, <laughs> you, you don't say that after COVID. You know what I mean? I mean, I said at the beginning of the recap, I'm under the weather, but I'm like in my house. You know what I mean? I will not yeah. be leaving here. You don't say that when you go somewhere in public during, even if it's after the worst of COVID. Like, hi, post-COVID. I don't feel good. Can I have some tea? No, get the fuck up. Die at home. <laughs> get out of here. I know. You Just keep it to yourself. Just Or, or just say, I have allergies today or something. <laughs> but like this lady. He was like, oh, great. Uh, I guess this is the cost of fame. I knew I should have let Roberta take this shift today. Yeah. So so Ash is like, hey, Dean, remember when we were running around that house? Did you have fun playing at that big house? Well, guess what? That's Dean's house now. Dean's going to live in a house now. You're going to have your own room. He's like, I don't care, mother. As long as I have this shirt on, everything you say is pure bullshit. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so she found this house, and she walked through the door, and she literally felt she was, uh, well, yeah, you walk into a $2 million house. I mean, shit, I'd feel at home, too. You know? Yeah. <laughs> and, and, she, <laughs> and, and, uh, and she bought it with Michael, by the way. Um, and uh, so... She uh, she FaceTimes Sheila, her mother, Sheila, mom. And she's like, so guess what? Like, um, so this morning, like, Dean, like, did not want to leave Michael. It's been happening a lot lately. And she's just she's just getting nervous that as the kids get older, they're going to blame her for leaving Michael uh, and for breaking up the family. Um, to which I think she just has to say, um, would you like to see footage of five years of your father? And then I know. You can decide whether or not hey, this is a bad decision. Hey, kids, today's cartoon. This is called Your Mom and Dad Opening a Kangaroo Restaurant. Enjoy. <laughs> would you like to see your dad laughing? Here it is. <laughs> Um, so she, yeah, this whole thing with getting a house with Michael and their LLC, look, her mom is not going to say it's smart. And it's like, Ashley's trying to trap her mom into saying something good about it by getting her on TV. But she's like, yeah, you know, we did it with uh, an LLC. And the mom's like, "Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay, okay, (laughs) honey. Okay. But Mm. I think that Ashley just got herself into a really bad prenup, and she screwed. We knew that that's why Ashley wanted those kids, you know? I mean, I think that was pretty clear, right, when they were about to break up. (laughs) Like, who's about to break up? And then it's like, let's have kids together. So she did that, and we see in the reunion that she's saying, I'm not getting anything out of the prenup. I'm not getting alimony, but she is going to get child support. And I guess if she stays with him long enough to keep this house paid for, she'll have the house. I mean, I don't know. That sounds like hell to me, but she's she's been with Michael naked on purpose multiple times. So, I mean, I can't read the woman, you know? Yeah, I really can't either. And, um, like, she's saying that they're both paying mortgage and everything. And she even says, like, yeah, it does sound counterintuitive and dumb, but I feel like financially it's a better decision for me. I'm like, well, until... 
until he takes the house back from the, in the divorce. I mean, like, I don't see how this is smart at all. This seems like such a disaster, but it's like classic Ashley. Yeah. So Dean is like, I want to go home. Let my nipples free, woman. <laughs> and so she leaves. And then we get the opening of everybody, like, just doing things around their house. And Giselle's head pops up from behind her rooftop. It's like, well, hello, branches. Ah. <laughs> yeah, I got to get rid is... of these branches. Ah. So she clears the roof of branches. And I was like, wow, I'm. I'm impressed. I would never do that. I don't do that. No, it's like Mia just losing branches everywhere. So uh, then we go to Juan. <laughs> hey, it was a little witticism about the joint chiropractic. <laughs> so then we go to Juan uh, making Robin and the kids work out in the driveway. And she's like, oh, I got to get in shape for a wedding. I'm like, there's four people. You don't have to get in shape for your wedding. I guarantee you don't have to get in shape for your wedding. So then um, over with Crystal and Candice, Candice's sister, Crystal, um, Candace is like, I've been paying bills, and she's like, Paying bills isn't fun, that's ghetto. It's <laughs> like, That's the opposite of ghetto paying bills, you know. Every time I pay bills, I'm like, Yes, I feel so classy, I've just paid a bill. Tell well, your friends, Ronnie paid his bill. Um, can Crystal, speaking about failed storylines, Crystal, uh, the friend of that never quite took off this season, she just sort of they've thrown her, they've thrown her at us a few times, and then just kind of like, uh, Never quite made it. Didn't quite pop, you know, I think the way Candace was hoping. So Candace is talking about how she's going to have a uh, video release party to premiere her insecure video. Um, and then to show how excited the people of Potomac are for this party, we then cut to a deer. We see a bunch of deer grazing around, wondering if they'll get invited to the party. Yes, and Karen is on the phone with her assistant, Robin. Not Robin, but no, Robin. her publicist. Her publicist, oh, her publicist Robin. Robin. I love this, Robin. She's like uh, Bethany Cosplay. <laughs> the DMV Robin. The DMV Bethany. Yeah. But Karen's like, well, Robin, the update on the three-week is that we've restocked for the holidays and out to four weeks. Four weeks, Robin. Hmm? And Robin's like, well, we just need to make sure we keep it up with that. Okay, everything good? See you later. Four-week, Robin. <laughs> it's, my new, it's my new LinkedIn title. Four-week, Robin. Good talking to you, Karen. <laughs> so then Karen starts FaceTiming with Mia. And Mia's like, hi. Fam, hi, lovely. She's like, oh, hi, how are you? She's like, I'm okay. I mean, I had a chicken wing on Robin's bachelorette party. Mmm, dirty bird, dirty bird, dirty bird, dirty bird, dirty bird, dirty bird, dirty bird. You had a dirty bird, didn't you? Yeah, and I have a gluten allergy. Ooh, dirty wheat, the dirty wheat on the dirty bird. It's funny how Karen has a full stand for her iPhone. <laughs> she puts her I iPhone that. on this huge stand and just carries it around to like change the scenery for the next call and luxurious, luxuriate in a different pose. I noticed. I actually noticed her stand. Oh, it's so funny that you mentioned that. <laughs> um, so Mia's like, well, there were things sad about you. Karen, 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 that's all I heard. And Karen's like, first, from who? <laughs> She's like, Sharice, I remember specifically that she said you will sleep with any dick walking when you're drunk and that there was a time you went missing and come to turn out you were having sex with a bartender or some kind of employee of a restaurant establishment and karen's nose is just twitching like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if it was if she had like bewitched mag uh like a uh, bewitched magic shit would just be flying all over her house crashing under the wall like, her <laughs> nose twitches swirling. just going it's like, mm -hmm. she, she sort of looks like a disney character that someone's trying to make sneeze you know like when there's like i feel like there's some cartoon yeah where they're trying to hold like, their sneeze <laughs> yeah where their nose is always like doing the little twitchy thing and you're like it's gonna happen it's gonna happen mm -hmm. Kill the wabbit, kill the wabbit, kill the wabbit, achoo! Mia, give me a moment, I have a small wooden child in my stomach and his and his strange uncle creator, like, cannot sneeze them out right now. <laughs> Just making her the whale. <laughs> so she, um, uh, yeah, so Karen, though, does, kind of turns this on her head, because Mia reports this news, and then Karen goes, did you defend me? 
And Mia's like, um, well, I was like, um, so what are you telling me, fam? She goes, hmm, so if they were talking about you like that, and you and I have grown so much, I would have defended you, but you didn't do that for me. So she's just like, I mean, the definition of shooting the messenger, she's just like, <laughs> like her, 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 her semi-ally, I hear she's just roasting right now. It's like a weird power move, I think, to keep her somehow indebted to her. I don't know. Yeah, I thought it was pretty funny. It's like she did the part about being a total slut sleeping with people in restaurants. Just she didn't even phase her. She's like, "How dare you not defend me?" <laughs> um, so Mia's like, "Well, I didn't defend you." She goes, "Well, you didn't." And she goes, "Well, maybe I should have." And then we see three days ago them at the strip club, and Mia just cracking up hearing all this stuff. Yeah, and um, Karen's like, uh, "Considering the souls, we don't care, and we don't hear it. That woman is dangerous." Mm. Yeah, I think Karen's just looking for an out to have Sh- to have Mia as like her her buddy on the show, you know. So then we go over to Robin. Well, how do you prove that you didn't do something too? You know what I mean? I mean, you can't prove you didn't do something. There's there's no way. So how are you gonna? How is she even supposed to deal with this storyline? I was actually pretty impressed with how she dealt with it. She just kept yelling at everybody. Don't hear, don't care, don't wear mascara. She, yeah. What, her, what did that even mean? I don't even know what it meant, but it sounded very authoritative. Well, yeah, she kept on saying, I hear you, but I'm not listening. So then we go over to Robin, who's looking at hat samples <laughs> for Embellish. The Embellish makes its grand return for this episode. And she's like, hmm, I like this color. It's perfect for fall. So she puts on like a sample hat. And uh, her parents come over, Gladys and Guy. And, um, uh, they haven't seen the, the house since they've decorated it and everything. So they're like getting like a little tour, checking out the drapes in the living room, which Gladys does not really approve of because they're, they're piling too much on the floor. And, uh, and then finally Robin's like, you want to sit down? And her mom's like, uh, no, I'm just going to stand here and just like grow old while I'm here or whatever, whatever she was. She's like, yes, of course I want to sit down. Yeah, what did she say? She said something like, no, I'll just stand here until I stroke out. I was like, geez. Um, wow. I don't remember her actual line, but it was like, no, I'll just stand here and, you know, die young or whatever she said. I was like, damn, Gladys. So basically, Robin tells them that she's going to, you know, skim off the top of her cousin's wedding and <laughs> pull a Sheena wedding in Jamaica. And um, Gladys is really pissed off that she's not being invited. And Robin's like, well, if I have to invite my parents, then I have to invite my cousins. And if I have to invite my cousins, then I have to invite the grocery store checkout people. And if I have to invite the grocery store checkout people, then I have to invite the people that fill potholes. It's like, Mm -hmm. that's a real stretch there, Robin. And Gladys doesn't care. She's pissed. Yeah, all these people who just can't wait to go to Robin's wedding. So um, she's basically, basically Robin's like, well, you've, uh, everyone, you've always been there for me and Juan, and you never judged us, and that means a lot to us. And anyway, still not invited. See you later, Mom. I know. Her mom's so excited to go to a cash bar with, like, those little pigs in a blanket from Trader Joe's being passed around on a, on a paper yeah. plate. Yeah, exactly. So now we see the deer again. And now we go to Gordon and Mia showing up at a doctor's office. And Gordon parks his car. I don't know if you noticed this, but I noticed it because I know when uh, everyone does this. You saw this, right? You saw of this. Of course. This you know that One of the most offensive parts of the episode. Me. Yes. He fucking parked across two parking spots with his car. Well, he parked backwards, first of all. When you back into a space. Now, listen, we've all done it. Okay, especially you're at a home goods. There's no one there. You're like, I'm going to back into this and I only have to press drive. I'll get all the hard work done before I park. We've all done it. But I think we can also all agree that's kind of a dick way to park. Because when wait, you're wait, what? Why? You didn't know that? That's a very rude way to park. Because when Why? you're in a parking lot, people have to sit there and wait for you to back into a space, which takes a lot longer. And also your car being diff- at a different, um, facing a different way than everyone else, it makes the doors open incorrectly into each other. So it's much more likely that they're going to hit your car with their, their car mm. door window. It's just rude. And it takes more time. Now, there was no one in this parking lot. So at first I was like, okay, Ronnie, get over it. You've done it too, you hypocrite. But then he backed in out of the lines and i was like you know what you rich fuck i would i would key you i would key you yeah two fucking parking spots i i don't generally back into uh parking spots but sometimes i have to 
because I find that I, I oddly enough have a little bit more control. Because you know, like if it's like a if it's a narrow parking lot, uh, like it's actually hard to like make a left turn into a spot. Sometimes you're gonna like clip the car as you make your left turn on the on the inner inner angle there. So sometimes it's act. I feel like you can get more precision by backing in, and so that's when I will back in when it's narrow and that's really, I'm forcing that situation by other people. So it's not even my choice. I blame other people for making me do that. So I apologize to anyone who has re- been on the receiving end of, I guess my asshole doors being the other direction. It's yeah. not my fault. Yeah. You guys put me, you know, you some places they it. even, they have signs that you can't back in park. Some places yeah. even have that. So it's not, they my do, head. they yeah. do, but I don't think it's, I think that's mainly because they um, don't want people backing their car accidentally into like the cables that are back there. Mm-hmm, Sometimes mm-hmm. like there's like cable, cable mm-hmm, railings, mm-hmm, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause people, people are assholes. That's why. Um, so I'm just kidding. I'm giving you a hard time about how you're parked. I literally don't care. So um, they're at this doctor. Now Mia is a delusional person. So she's hoping that she's going to have this big vindication scene where she goes to a doctor's office who, by the way, I typed incorrectly and I wrote cooter. Couture's office, C O T O O R. Cooler. <laughs> so she's going to this doctor. She's hoping she's going to have this vindication scene where the doctor is going to be like, Well, listen, you thought you had leukemia, you thought you had Lou Gehrig's, and you thought you had Crohn's mixed with Legionnaires. But guess what? It's even worse. You've got. Dun, dun, dun. But that's not really what happened. I've never <laughs> felt bad for somebody not getting a horrible diagnosis as I did in this scene. I was like, poor Mia. All she wanted was a good diagnosis that was terrible, you know? And she couldn't even get it. Sorry, Mia. Yeah, she's like, well, the good, you know, the doctor ruled out that I have life-threatening issues, thank the Lord. But I also have a lymph node that's swollen. I'm like, it's a lymph node, but not fine. Lymph node, we'll let you have it. I have a lymph node. A- <laughs> she doesn't know that's limping. So, well, my my node had to be t- put on the sideline. It's it's injured this week. Can't play in the game. <laughs> it's so, benched. I have a limp uh, node that's benched. So, you know, I I always felt like slightly uneasy with the storyline because um, even though you know throughout the season she's gotten tests back that say actually everything's fine, I still feel like she's allowed to be scared. Buy all this, Lord knows I would be scared. I have like anything that's irregular, and I'm like, I'm dying. So like, I was, I was sort of like in the back of my mind, I was allowing her to be scared. But this was pretty funny because you know the doctor, Doctor Shram, basically sits her down and it's like, look, we were concerned that maybe a sarcoidosis, you know, which could, you know, that could be a thing that affects the organs and everything, but. Basically, it's a rash. You have a rash. <laughs> well, it's just, it's, she was trying, because I think she knew what Mia was there for. So she was actually trying to help Mia. So she's like, well, because um, Mia's going, well, they ruled out lymphoma, lymphoma. And then I went to another doctor, and they they moved to leukemia. Um, and then that's why you did the biopsy. So what did they say? She's asking, like, what's my prize, you know, on a game show? And the doctor is like, well, one thing the pathologist has discussed is sarcoidosis. It's a skin disease or something systemic. But it doesn't look like it's going to spread as seen as this biopsy. But we'll want to rule out anything else internal before we let you go. She's making it sound like this is very serious. It could be horrible. You could have complete organ failure, but we're going to just rule all that out. And then Gordon goes, so you're saying it's just topical and it's a mild aggravation. (laughs) And she goes, yes, it's a rash. It's a rash. Uh, Thank you. Thank you for being the one to put it out there. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, You have a, unfortunately, a severe case of what we call mosquito bite. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Mia's like, oh, okay. she says, so the next step would be a chest x ray to make sure the lymph nodes are not inflamed. And uh, she's like, oh, it's been so challenging for me, but now I know I'm going to live on <gasps> to send on my bloodline. It's humbling for sure. And the doctor's like, okay, well, we'll check in a month and make sure you haven't grown some other terrible, deadly disease. Okay? We'll see you yeah. around uh, shooting the next season. Okay. <laughs> Call me. It's time for a commercial. 
It's time for a Crappens commercial. So then we go over to Giselle with her daughters. Her daughters, some of my favorite people on Bravo. And uh, she takes them to get some ice cream and, some, and they go to the candy shop and everything. And, you know, they all sit down with all this food. And Giselle's like, well, uh, we have so much to celebrate. Ah! And they're like, like what? Well, Steve, remember Steve? Uh, he took me out on a little date ski the other night. Uh, and they're, they're like, like ew. Oh. <laughs> <It doesn't, laughs> just Mom, you're flick. famous. Yeah, you they have this better. look on their face like, gross. The men's warehouse guy, gross. <laughs> Ser- <laughs> seriously. So, um, just like, so, uh, any commentary? Uh, you guys like Steve? Uh, they're like, no, it's fine. It's sadly the best you've done in quite some time so we're okay with it i thought it was pretty funny that they actually showed this date with steve and it's like well hello steve ah. um what do you think about dating ah? and he's like well um i remember that we kissed and did all that stuff a long time ago and now here you are again smiling in my face so not really sure why you called me <laughs> he was very much like why are you calling me this is so weird yeah so um so then giselle gets serious and she's like listen nah, i have something to tell you ah uh, that's not necessarily good news ah uh, but i have to have surgery on my lady parts uh, and she tells them about fibroids and hers are really big and they're getting really they're getting larger and they're sitting in her uterine wall. And then her daughter's like, how do you pee? She's like, <laughs> and then the other one's like, okay, stop. It has nothing to do with pee. <laughs> and just, I was like, uh, hello. Uh, I'm trying to have a serious conversation. Uh, and you don't know anatomy. Yeah. She's like, I just made a slip up, mom. Oh, what if you have cancer? She's like, well, we're going to pray. I don't die, but they have to take out my uterus. And they're like, well, hey, at least you're not going to have menopause, mom. Yeah, mom. <laughs> <laughs> which i don't think that's true so um, yeah when you have a hysterect she's having a hysterectomy right yeah yeah you don't have a um you don't go through menopause after a hysterectomy my mom had one <laughs> she was like the one positive thing about this <laughs> i did not know that but you know the thing is that i barely understand vaginas this is one of the things that happens to, i shouldn't say this is what happens when you're a gay man but my, my gay experience is that I um, don't ever go close to vaginas, and I know uh, I know their shape, and I know they've got fallopian tubes, and there's ovaries, and eggs go through them and stuff. But that's essentially the extent of my knowledge. <laughs> yeah, neither one of us really understand. I think we both look at women parts as like a, a cup of bobo tea. We don't really understand <laughs> what's happening in there. I accept as part of you know our world and our culture um, all right like i support the shops but every time i go into it i'm gonna ask for a diet coke anyway you know what i mean <laughs> so this yeah. uh, just so people do know i do have google fortunately just in case any women are like i'm getting a hysterectomy today ronnie said you know i have a you know i have menopause so a hysterectomy is a surgical removal of a woman's uterus women may need a hysterectomy due to endometriosis fibroids pelvic inflammatory disease cancer or uterine prolapse sometimes a hysterectomy is needed to save your life uh, depending on your condition your doctor will determine okay well where's the answer i hate when you have to keep scanning symptoms of menopause only surgical removal of your ovaries which produce estrogen estrogen will cause you to go into menopause immediately if your ovaries were not removed during a hysterectomy you might experience hot flashes and other menopausal symptoms temporarily following a surgery symptoms are caused oh wow so you're not really free from it maybe it just starts it earlier is that what i'm getting it triggers it menopause more like meno play am i right <laughs> um so anyway you know what my favorite is when we talk yeah. about women's anatomy on this show as if we have any idea of what the hell we're doing <laughs> well i mean that's why i'm trying to google you know because like at least we're not spreading only terrible information but i have this disease where even if i'm looking at the definition and reading it out loud i still don't know what any of it means you know what i mean like i, I don't know what any what did i just say i have no idea yeah i'm like i i barely even understand the definition of a vagina in the first place so this is really just like beyond my pay grade i'm just like talking Oh, life giving um, flower. Okay, let's move on. So Grace is like, <laughs> so she's simple. like, well, I'm upset uh, because men have penis and balls uh, and women have ovaries and that's just how it is. Uh. And Grace is like, mom, you're still you no matter what they take from you. You could just be ahead. But as long as you're accusing people of cheating or being cheated on, 
You're still mom to me. She's like, oh, girls, that was so sweet. Mom, whether you have your uterus or not, you're still going to have your terrible fashion sense. You are still you at the end of the day. <laughs> and one of them is like, uh, do you want a hug? She's like, oh, my God, thank you so much. That's all I wanted. And I like that. I think it was a door. It's like, but you know, she's trying to like do like the uh, here, like on, on the on the plus side of all this. You don't have to have as many fans at church. <laughs> Yeah. So then we go to Wendy's and she's talking to Karen and Karen now has her phone stand, you know, by her dressing table. And she's like lying back on a chaise like, mm, here I am getting ready for Candace's event. And um, she, I don't even write down any lines for Wendy. Come poor Wendy. Wendy is just a vessel at this point for everybody else to have somebody to she's talk to. She's not a vessel. She's not a vessel. She's a plate. And there's a lot of a lot of things on it. Okay, <laughs> she's a plate for everybody to pack their own issues onto to talk vessels. about. Yeah, plate of vessels. <laughs> so she says that she got updated about this bachelorette party that neither one of them was invited to, and the things were said about her that were so disparaging and so disgusting. I won't even repeat it. But the thing that struck me is, I asked me if she stood up for me, and she didn't stand up for me. And Wendy's like, oh, really? Well, in uh, Professor Acefo coming up. In the words up, of Dr. Yeah, Professor Acefo, in the words of Dr. Martin Luther King, sometimes it's not the voice of our en enemies, but the silence of our friends that rings the deepest. And I'm like, and I'm sure um, Dr. Martin Luther King was specifically speaking about rumors about Karen blowing people <laughs> in the bathroom when he said that. <laughs> In the end, we remember not the words of our enemies, but the blowjobs we've given in Chili's bathrooms. So Candace I have a dream of putting locks on the bathroom doors. That way there's no bad behavior in there. <laughs> so then we go to Candace's music video premiere party, and there's like arrivals, and everyone's like, oh my god, hi, oh my god, hi. And um, there's a Eddie doesn't know what it is. To take out everyone. Yeah, that's a Maryland thing that we've learned. Everything yeah, is every, every upstairs. Is upstairs. <laughs> and actually, that happens with us when we go there, right? Whenever we're in D.C., everything's upstairs. I mean, you noticed. <laughs> Do you remember the first place I, we went there? The listeners were like, oh, my God, we made a party. It's going to be so fun. And it was up three flights of stairs. Girl, I'm a fat yeah. person. I was like, no. That was I will that be beer down garden here. Was up a long, <laughs> actually, I was the one who chose the beer garden, so I'll take the blame for that. But uh, it was a very, very tall staircase that was never ending. And it's like, I get it now. You're right. Like, everything is upstairs. And, like, I mean, remember uh, the Karen's vow renewal? Was it last season? <laughs> Where she had to go up a giant staircase to get to her table. I mean, everything is up a staircase on this show. Yeah, it really is. So everybody's just mingling around, and um, Giselle is sees Chris, and she's like, hello, Chris Sa, and then just walks on, and he's just looking at his phone, you know? Or as they yeah. like to call it on this show, you know, aggressively yeah, touching somebody. Yeah, Deborah. <laughs> so so uh -huh. Giselle tells us, I'm not mad at Chris Sa. I was like, oh, really? That's so good of you, Giselle. That is so good of you not to be mad at Chris after you spread rumors about Chris all season long and he's done nothing to you. That's so sweet of you, Giselle. Yeah, and then Chris tells us, you know, sometimes an apology to squash and move on is a good thing, but I feel like in this situation where I stand by the fact that I did nothing wrong, I don't need to ever speak to her ever again. I'm like, well, so then, yeah, he's right. I mean, <laughs> but like, I hate, I hate when I have to take up, up Chris's side. Yeah. So then um, he kisses Candace. Like, oh, my God, we love each other. And then um, Candace comes in and she goes to her manager and she's like, um, so are you guys going to announce me? <laughs> because there should be some yeah. sort of announcement of my presence. So they're like, everybody, here is Candace. And everyone's like, hi. <laughs> like, yeah. What? But what was great was that. She was at the bar and where she tells her manager, um, I feel like there should be an announcement of my presence. He's like, okay. So she goes, she walks out of the bar area and then walks back into the bar area. And they're like, everyone, Candace. I'm like, wow. They're like, uh, Great work there. Hi. Hi. Um, so. Pretzels. Uh, let's see. There's a lot of small talk here because it's a party scene, you know? Yeah. So Giselle um, and. 
Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. So Giselle and Candace are, are, are hugging and kissing and everything. And me and Gordon arrive. People are showing up. And um, uh, Shasha, Shasha's there. And she sees Karen walking. She's like, well, here's your friend. And just like, ooh-wah, Karen. I think Karen doesn't want to come over here because she she sees you here. And she's scared. Da. And we just see, see, see Karen standing off to the side, looking everywhere. But Charisse trying yeah. to avoid her. Yeah. Um, and then Ashley comes and uh, scream hugs Wendy. And she's like, you know, we had a lot of fun in Mexico. And then we were talking about it. And you weren't there when we were talking about it. And Wendy's like, what was said about me? She's like, well. And then we see Mia being messy. Or not Mia. Uh, yeah, Mia on the bus saying, oh, yeah, she just wanted my cookie. <laughs> Um, and, um, Wendy's like, Mia, you said I wanted your cookie? You whispered in my ear you wanted to eat my box. So what the hell? And they all start cracking up. <laughs> yeah. Wendy's like, she wanted the Godiva of a goddess, baby. And all she had to say is, can I touch it? And I would have thought about it. But what's so, funny about know. Wendy, what's funny about Mia's constant lying is at least she admits it. Because Wendy says that and Mia just like nods and laughs like, yeah. And now she's like, you said that? Come on, Mia. <laughs> She does. So funny. That's just what she does. That's how she gets through it. So, um, so now everyone's doing a toast for uh, for Candace's music video, and a guy makes a speech saying how proud he is, and he's glad that she's insecure because that's the name of the video. And uh, so we watch the video and everything. And well, actually, before we watch the video, he brings Candace up, and Candace is like, first, as always, thank the Lord because the Lord is first, and then my family, and I'm gonna cry." I'm going to cry. So someone hands her a cry angle and she's just getting emotional about this video, um, which on some ways I understand, but also she's really acting like she's at the Grammys, which is funny because this was airing against the Grammys. And I'm like, you're on the second floor of a fast casual restaurant right now. So, I mean, like this is nice for you and everything, but you did not just win album of the year. It's a very quad moment, you know, like where quad throws herself a party to congratulate herself. Yeah. <laughs> Do you remember that? She had like this big party to congratulate herself on like her cookbook or something. So you're paying for a party for yourself. Then she had her Lexus, her new Lexus delivered to the party. And then she started crying at the Lexus and giving a thank oh, you speech God, to right. everybody. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That is such a, that's a great comparison. <laughs> like you just bought yourself that car. So funny. What a classic. Um, but yeah. this is the Candace version, you know, and Candace is such a div, and I like that she's got, an already folded triangle in somebody's hand to hand her. That was funny. Yeah. So then, um, I love you, Chris. <laughs> I love you. You are my man. And everyone comes up and woos, and he's in like little short pants. I can't with this guy. <laughs> so then, um, she tells us, no matter what miserable people might try to create, that's my man. That's my homie. And you can't break us, girl. Next. <laughs> so then she introduces the world premiere of the visual. For Insecure, featuring Trina, the baddest bitch. Yeah, so we watch the music video and everything, and Mia's watching us. I mean, it's much better than a parking lot, <laughs> which is true. And it's the first um, thing she said when Gordon carried over her carried her over the threshold on their wedding night. <laughs> oh, it's a lot better than a parking lot. <laughs> yeah, parking lots and scandals just really follow Mia everywhere, and I'm of course referring specifically to the double parking from earlier in this episode. I'm still really angry about it. So then, um, yeah, Ashley's like, yeah, I really like the visuals. Like, I think the music video is, like, so good. And Mia's like, yeah, the budget is, like, no longer low, honey. The budget is high. And Karen's like, well, look at her. She's doing the damn thing. And then the producer asks Giselle, uh, did you like the song? She's I can't even remember it. Uh, was it good? Uh, listen, I wish Ken was the best for her music career. Uh, no idea what she was singing. Uh, so later, Robin shows up after everything's done, of course, because it's Robin. And she's dressed in a wedding dress, kind of, like a white dress. And they're like, well, where were you? She's like, a wedding shower for my sister-in-law. It's like, wow, you really are an asshole. So you are you show up in white at your sister-in-law's wedding shower, which is yeah. already a giant fuck you to her. And now you're going to get married at her wedding? Man, Robin sucks. <laughs> yeah. Um, so then uh, Giselle's... Uh... Giselle's talking to Karen. Giselle's just being full on messy now. She's like, so uh, they told you about the bachelorette party, huh? 
And Karen's like, yes, well, Mia downloaded me and told me, and I, and as I told Mia, I hear, no, I hear, but I'm not listening. Did you hear that, Giselle? That's going to be my tagline for the next 20 minutes of this show. I hear, but I'm not listening. I receive what Mia said, and I don't think that she's lying. So then Giselle goes, did she tell you she called you a prostitute? Da. Which is not what Mia did whatsoever. God, Mia Giselle's was- such a fucking liar. <laughs> my God. She's not even trying anymore. She's just flat out lying. Flat out lying. But I will say, to be fair, um, it's something that Mia totally would have done if it had been reversed. Because Mia does the exact same thing. So Giselle's just kind of... Mia, Giselle is both lying and giving Mia a little bit of little Mia stuff. So Well, that's kind of what the whole that's kind of what's happening in this whole finale and I think that that's what's lacking. It's that everybody has already done all of this stuff. They've already all accused each other of they've all committed these wrongs. You know what I mean? Over the years on this show. Mm-hmm. So like you can't feel bad for Karen. Karen's accused people's husbands of cheating and all the stuff she says about Juan and Robin and all of this. Like you can't really feel bad for anyone at this point because they all do it, you know? Mhm. So what just I was like, yeah, did she tell you she called you a prostitute? Ah. Karen's like, mm, no, mm, she missed that part. And a chair just flies across the room. So Karen, get your magic under control, Karen. Get it <laughs> under control. And Giselle, Giselle explains why she brought this up because she says that she didn't want there to be any gray area and she wanted Mia to have the opportunity to explain why exactly she called Karen a prostitute. And then, then she just laughs. She goes, I was just being messy. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, yeah, I just was, I'm just fucking with Karen right now. And Karen's like, Ray, Ray, will you leave for a second? Don't take any of this seriously, okay, Ray? And he's like, okay. So he walks off. (laughs) And I love Ray's ability to just be like, oh, are they going to accuse you of whoring around on me again? Great, I'll just be right over there. (laughs) Yeah, I'm going to go to the snackables. It's like, I'm too old and tired to go through a divorce. I'll be standing right over there. Okay. He's like, if this gets me closer to Florida, I'm for it. <laughs> so um, so then Giselle now goes up to Mia and is like, so uh, when you downloaded Karen, did you tell her that you called her a prostitute? Because, by the way, Karen, she called her a prostitute. And Mia's like, no, I asked because I heard, I heard the word hotel and I heard you had sex with every dick that walks. <laughs> So I asked prost- I asked if they were accusing you of being a prostitute. And um, Giselle's like, well, as long as you know, Karen, I'm not. And she's like, well, I've been lucky enough to never have to sell my box. Mm-hmm. But I would let you know if I ever decide to do it. Ashley! Because Ashley's <laughs> obviously trying to push this along, too, right? So yeah. Ashley's like, well, uh, my only thing, Karen, is the reason it gives us more pause is because it's someone who's mutual friends with you, who's in the same community, that said it. And she's like, I am a mother. Do, 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 do. I am a member of the community. Do, 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 do. I am ambassador to Surrey County, the first county with Wi-Fi in a 20-mile radius. I will not receive it. I was like, woo, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> Balloons fall from the ceiling, <laughs> confetti comes down. And I accept this nomination to be mayor of Surrey County. <laughs> She's like, I'm not even going to defend myself. Okay. And then Ashley's like, well, if she, Karen's doing something, she's not doing a good job of hiding it. Just see, either say it's not true or own up to it or just say, yeah, me and Ray have an open relationship, you know? No, she doesn't owe you any of that. Okay, and the only reason you and fucking Darby had to do that, you know, Miss Projector, is because he was fucking around all over the place and getting caught on multiple blogs. This yeah. isn't the same thing. When a blog gets her, then you can go after her as hard as you did, as hard as they did for Darby. Well, then Shasha shows up, sort of like someone riding a slide on a burlap sack, you know, just sort of like, just sort of gliding right on in, and she's like. Do you have something to say to me? <laughs> she's like, uh, she's like, this clearly didn't work. Karen clearly is not coming over to confront me, so I got to do this. And Karen's like, I don't have anything to say to you. And she goes, Oh, so now you're not speaking to me? <laughs> like Shasha, I hate to break it to you, but she hasn't been speaking to you all season long. God, Shasha's so sad. She's coming here with gossip that's like years old. I mean, when mm. was her? Did she do season two? She did do season two. Right? Yeah, she was in season two, and then she's been friend of ever since. So then Karen's like, Well, I don't know why you're speaking to 
me in my airspace. Why are you speaking in my airspace? We have F-14s flying around my head right now, ready to shoot you down. Are you from China? Are you a balloon right now? Yeah, she's like, I hear you, but I'm not listening or receiving. We are done. Receiver off. Beep, beep, beep. <laughs> Charisse is like, you don't want to be, oh, so you want to continue to be fake and phony? Well, that's that. Give her a fake path, everybody. Give her a fake path. I was like, wow. Okay, let me mark that down on the reasons to keep Charisse. <laughs> fake path. Ray? Yes, bitch. Yes. Hey, Ray says that she can have eye candy. She didn't know she'd be eating. He didn't know that she'd be eating this shit. <laughs> he said, just look at this shit, okay? Because it's candy. And people like to eat candy. And she ate the candy. So it was, she was eating her, her eye candy, which should really make the mouth candy. You see what I'm saying here? Should I take it from the top? <laughs> Eye candy. She ate the eye candy. Wow, Sharice. So Robin's like, this is what I expected. Like not paying attention and then walking away. Um, and then there's a huge squeal because Candace is coming over um, to say hi to everybody. And, um, and then Mia and Karen are talking. And Mia's like, listen, I just want to make sure we have a sidebar. Is a woman who recently suffered through almost leukemia and also... Almost a lot of other things, something sarcosis or limping nose, something like that. I would like to make sure we're okay. And she's like, well, we've had enough. And consider the source. <laughs> and Mia's like, well, wait. Line. Yeah. She's like, wait, there's more. It's like, don't, don't, don't. And Karen goes, well, what more? Because my husband is standing right here. And he's like, oh, well, more whoring around talk. I'll go over there. I don't need to hear it. I don't need to hear this. So he goes over to the guys. It's like, ha, ha. Ah, and he holds, they're accusing and he's holding, my wife of being a whore again. <laughs> Are you just standing there holding her purse, just waiting for her to to uh, disentangle herself from whore accusations? So then um, Giselle is talking to Candace, and she's like, So, uh, Candace, uh, I thought I was going to talk to your husband by now, uh, since you said he wanted to talk to me. Uh, it's kind of like the season finale, uh, so we're running out of time. Uh, and she's like, probably not today. So then back to me and Karen. Mia's like, you know, I'm the manager at Chili's, right? And Karen's <laughs> like, um, mm, 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 I'm smelling something in 10 different counties right now. Hold on. Mm, 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 I almost said a clue. And Mia's <laughs> That's like, a little fly on my nose. Mm -hmm. Well, someone is saying that you were dating his best friend and you guys went to Vegas and you had sex with him in the bathroom. And was this when I was a single woman? I'm just joking. It's humor. I'm unbothered by this accusation whatsoever. So Mia's like, well, that's why when I said I had sex in the Waffle House bathroom, you were like, cool, I get it now. And we get a flashback to when they did like their newlyweds game. And she said she had sex in the Waffle House. And Karen was like laughing. So Karen's like, listen, I'm not going to be defensive about some man I don't know. I'm a Bitch for 59 when I may have a little bit of dust on my nose that's causing it to swirl in all different directions, but I'm a bad bitch nevertheless. And I, if I got a young man saying he's doing me, then I'm a bad bitch because now I got a man right over there and he loves me, he cares about me, and he trusts me, and that's all I care about. I hear this, but I'm not listening. Well, I wanted you to really hear it because you're accusing Sharice of making it up, and I don't think he even knows Sharice. And so Mia says that she heard this about Karen last year. And so they can't blame it all on Sharice. And um, she's like, yeah, it's not Sharice's fault you were bobbing and weaving in Vegas, according to the Chili's manager. And that's okay. I mean, if Ray's cool with it, it's not okay. Because you guys are just walking around trying to host shame everybody. And you of all fucking people, Mia, you know, you of all people, step down, madame. Okay? Well, this is how you know Karen's about to leave. Because she says her uh, five-minute warning phrase, which is, let me be very clear. So she always says that when it's about five minutes of her from leaving a venue. Let me be very clear. If that were true, I would admit that. And it's just not true. Which, by the way, I don't believe if it were true, she'd admit it whatsoever. And she's like, and the owners of that Chili's, they don't even know you. I call them. You don't even go there. So stop, Mia. I love that. <laughs> she said she had her people reach out as if she's like a global organization. <laughs> Not showing pictures. Did you ever see this woman giving a blowjob in the bathrooms? <laughs> He's dressed like Columbo. Yeah. So then Wendy's like, oh, Karen's leaving. And Candace is like, what did you all do to Karen today? And Giselle's like, no idea. Ah. Uh. <laughs> 
<laughs> there are so many rumors swirling around there. Uh, and Ray is like, oh, do we really have to go? <laughs> yeah. I was really enjoying those past apps. And Robin's like, there's a pattern here, guys. Um, yeah, you're always trying to call Karen a cheater in a season finale, and she pays you dust. Go take a nap, Robin, okay? So Giselle's exactly. like, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, guy. Um, Candace did say in Mexico that Chris wanted to talk. Ah. So this is where all their storylines just start failing at once, right? We've got the Karen thing, which was not a success. So yeah. now they're going to try this Chris thing again. And um, Giselle's like, well, we've been here. And Ashley's like, am I in a timeout or something? I'm not allowed to talk? Yeah, this is funny. I mean, I mean, they all know. They know. They know. Of course, Chris doesn't want to talk about this tonight when it's all supposed to be about Candace. Like, of course, this is not. Chris knows it's going to be a scene. The chances are he's going to be made out to look like a bad guy. He doesn't want to do this. But they are like, uh, this is the season finale, and this is important for our storyline. So we need to have the talk. So they are there, and they also just want to like, like you said, they they want to make something happen here with this, right? So uh, so Robin's like, guys, um, it's probably not that important for him to talk to you all, which is like actually a point for robin there so ashley's like well i guess that's fair but like you're also not gonna like go threaten me on twitter and like not say it to my face i'm like that's literally all you guys do all the time yeah and he did not threaten you on twitter give me a break so candace comes over and giselle is um basically like what the hell we need to talk to chris right and we see a clip of uh they make jokes about kfc about the last finale when Karen was like, Karen I had date night and you all made me leave and I didn't even get to date night. I had to eat KFC. So they're making fun of that, which is hilarious because they're pointing out that they tried this exact same storyline last year and it's still not working. It just makes the whole thing sadder for them, you know? So then um, Candace, it's been her season basically. So she's like giving a speech to everybody and saying, you're all messy, but, and you all do fucked up shit sometimes, but I still love you. Yeah. And she wants and and because Karen's not there, she basically takes like a flower that's nearby and puts it into a stanchion and is like, this will be Karen. And um and so she makes this nice speech and it's one of those things like, Oh, I love you all. And Ash is like, That's great. Okay, now let's get messy. So um Chris is here and he and I haven't talked, so if I can talk to him and Candace is being very calm, she's like, Well, I don't know if he's open to speaking tonight. He doesn't want anything to take away from the celebration of this evening, which as in case you all forgot is the unveiling of my music video on top of a Jamba juice. Okay. Let's not take away from that. She's like, well, who said I was going to be a problem? Who said I was going to be? And she's like, well, that is the problem. Candid uh, Ashley, we don't know. So she's like, okay, well, his and actions, whether they were innocuous or not, have been interpreted that way. Uh, you're still denying that your husband was walking, walking around sexually assaulting crew members. Madame, you can back the fuck True. off. So then Candace is like, oh, right, right. So these accusations from your friend uh, from Sesame Street. Oh, and now you're insulting my quite beautiful friend. You know, she's always seen a lot of you. She sees two of you, you know, and that's the beauty of crossed eyes. <laughs> so then Ashley decides, you know what? I'm just going to go up and talk to Chris, which is, by the way, what Giselle should have done. Candace goes, was... she literally has a Sesame Street twinkle in her eye. <laughs> what do you want from me? <laughs> yeah. So Ashley goes in and, and goes over to Chris, and uh, she's like, um, like, all I'm going to say is that, like, Chris, is that, like, when you said those things about me on Twitter? And Chris is like, which things? He goes, if my tweet upset you, obviously I was upset because someone was telling me that I grabbed another woman's ass. And, and Candace goes, Candace is basically chiming in to defend Chris and everything. And Chris is like, and even suggesting that suggesting that I would do something inappropriate in that moment is fucked up, disrespectful, and I don't fuck with it. I'm sorry. And I was so mad and I tweeted that. And if you're gonna lie on me, you're gonna be you're gonna be sorry because I'm gonna do something about it. And I'm not gonna sit here and let you say whatever the fuck you want. And now you got me angry and cussing at you, and I apologize because I don't wanna do that. You know what? And I, but I'm angry, and I'm very angry, and honestly, I want to have a longer sentence right now, but I'm doing short sentences because I'm angry. And I apologize for that too. I want oh to have a better God. sentence he's, structure. Oh, he's terrible. He's so he's so embarrassing. I get embarrassed watching him. Like he really is like, yeah, and now you got me cussing at you. I'm like, okay, Chris. Chris, like, please get Chris off the screen, okay? You're embarrassing yourself more than Ashley ever could. And she's like, well, I'm sorry, but some of your actions are questionable. And he's like, fuck that shit, Ashley. No, I'm done. Fuck that shit. Fuck that shit. And he, like, storms off. 
you know? And he's like, <laughs> I tried. I tried. And then Chip at the Nash is like, what did I say? That was so bad. I mean, so, so classic, <laughs> Ashley. That's why you got to keep her around because she is so shameless. Then we see a clip for this Watch What Happens Live that's coming up. And it's just Ebony holding up her book. She's like, this is me. It's my book. It's my book. So yeah. then uh, we're continuing. And uh, we've just seen Chris storm off. And Wendy's like, did you think that was going to go well? She's like, well, we're adults. <laughs> and Chris is just yelling, fuck that. Fuck everybody. And he's like storming out. So... Candace tells us that I have retired the idea of having a real friendship with Ashley. The blessed life I have led is one she can only dream of and her ashy, ashy dreams. <laughs> yeah, and Candace is basically telling Chris, like, there's nothing you can do. Like, don't worry about it. Like, or, like, you can't win. And he's like, I can't. He's like, there's nothing I can do. So she's like, listen, you can't battle against perpetually damaged people. So and then Ashley is still insisting that she did nothing wrong. Um, and now we get like the like the, the little wrap up thing. So Ashley and her kids moved into their new home in October, and she briefly dated Winterhouse's Luke Branson, but they have since called it quits. Which I didn't realize. I thought they were still dating, but I'm sort of hoping that that was going to last a little longer. I don't know why. I sort of liked it. God, why? Poor Luke. Well, I like the strangeness. That? I like the strangeness of a Real Housewives of Potomac slash Summer House crossover. It just was not something I was expecting, and I kind of wanted to live in it a little bit longer. Yikes. So then um, Karen it has expanded her empire, and her number one fan is Ray. And we see everybody's end cards. And Giselle also uh, had a hysterectomy and is dating a Bravo celebrity, which we have no idea who it is. It's Jason. It's Jason. Yeah. A lot of summer house people trying to make that candle keep burning. You know? Yeah. Bless their hearts. Candace, um, she went on a tour. Um, and uh, Chris is no longer working at the hotel. And then Wendy is kickboxing as a way to decompress and is now drinking a gallon of water a day. So that's how you can really tell that she's not going to be on next season I mean. because <laughs> that's like a pretty – like her update is that she drinks a gallon of water a day. <laughs> how yeah. Wendy is that ending? And now she drinks a gallon of water a day so she doesn't get kidney stones. So it's like, wow, good one. So then – um Mia's Mia health asks, remains stable, unlike her finances, because she and Gordon have lost control of their empire. Yeah, and we see Mia asking um, Robin if her mom's going to come to the wedding, and Robin gives like the most Robin response. She goes, ah, I haven't decided. So um, Robin got around. Robin went and basically never got around to the prenup, but she and Juan did get around to something else, dot, dot, dot. So this was one I thought it was going to cut because they were going to punish Robin for being an asshole, but they didn't. They showed a whole fucking wedding thing, and um, I'm not talking about. It. I'm not, I didn't write shit down about it. I don't care. She well, doesn't there was deserve nothing. It. There was nothing really to write down, which is basically first we are in like Jamaica and it's like the wedding day, and then it's a classic Potomac like just kidding, and then they show just sort of like a gloomy harbor. And we're in Maryland, and Robin's like, change of plans, we're in Maryland. So basically, probably Juan's brother found out and got mad and said, like, what the fuck are you doing? This is my wedding weekend. I'll bet so, it was the wife. I'm sure that her sister-in-law, when she saw Robin show up to the bridal shower dressed like the bride and probably taking presents from people, she's like, oh, I'll register too. <laughs> um, she was like, uh, are, is Robin going to pretend this is her wedding? Can you maybe ask her? Oh, yeah, yeah, we're getting married the day after. The same venue. I just told him not to clean up. <laughs> well, I called my friend Suzanne, who owns wedding venues, and this just feels more right. So they decide to get married on, on the shore in Maryland, the only shore that actually has a two-flight staircase to get up to it. It's just classic Maryland. Yeah. I mean, really, really typical <laughs> Potomac. <laughs> it's a two-story beach. So then we see um, clips of them over the years, and it's just all sad and lame and gives no hint of any kind of romance at all. And then they walk down a dock, and she turns back to the camera and flips us off. She's like, fuck you, haters. We did it. I just, my only response to that was, keep walking. Keep walking. Yeah, it was just sort of like, a, I was like, oh, this is, this is too long. I know we've waited many years for this, but the thing is, we haven't waited. We've just endured it. I was like, let's just, please. It could have just been one still photo. <laughs> I don't need all of this. And someone also called Alexia from Real Housewives of Miami to go to Miami Day miamidade.gov or whatever to see if this was ever even filed 
Because I, I don't yeah. know that I believe that it really was. And scroll to the bottom, Alexia. Scroll to the <laughs> Make bottom. Make sure you get the full story. The full story. <laughs> and then uh, Bravo yeah. Bravo did have enough time to throw up a title card at the very end that said, five months later, Robin admitted that Juan had been inappropriately communicating with another woman prior to their wedding, and the couple claims to have worked through their issue. Yeah. Also, Juan's in the scandal. <laughs> I was waiting for that title card, too. Yeah, also Juan is being accused of <laughs> completely ignoring sexual harassment. the sexual harassment and sexual assaults of uh, one of his teammates. <laughs> one of it, yeah, one of the one players of his on coaches, his team. Still one of the players, all that stuff. Yeah, so really, really bad. So uh, fuck that couple, uh, both of them. And I uh, hope they're out of here. But that was a decent season. It kind of went out on a fizzle. Guys, no one cares if you're cheating anymore. Like, that's so four years ago i literally don't care it seems like everyone on this cast is either cheating or has been cheated on and at this point i don't care it's a boring storyline do something else please i mean that they're the cheating cheating rumors are always sort of titillating but the thing is if it can't go beyond a rumor if it can't progress beyond it it's a little useless you know um uh, it's it's much more interesting to watch a storyline about dynamics between the women themselves i find yeah but we'll just have to see what happens so the reunion is not on next weekend because the super bowl but uh it'll be on in two weeks and uh sure it'll be a good one they do they always do a good reunion that's for sure all right everybody well thank you so much for being here please go over to watch what for links to all our live shows including our next one the crappies in los angeles uh, at the end of February. Also, the streaming tickets are up at the site. We will talk to you next time. Bye, everyone. Bye. Watch What Crappens would like to thank its premium sponsors. Ain't no thing like Allison King. Ashley Saboni. She don't take no baloney. Christy Wowardy Dowardy. Dana C. Dana Do. She's not just a Sheila. She's a Daniela. Itchels. Aaron McNicholas. She don't miss no Trickolus. Hava Nagila Weber. Jamie. She has no less namey. Sip some scotch with Jessica Trotch. She's always supplying. It's Kelly Ryan. Kristen the Piston Anderson. You're never alone with Lacey Monteleone. Let's give a kisserino to Lisa Lino. Megan Berg. You can't have a burger without the Berg. Sarah Greenwood. She only uses her power for good. Can't stop fanning over Tina Manning. The Bay Area Betches. Betches. And our super premium sponsors. Somebody get us 10 cc's of Betsy MD. We're taking the gold with Brenda Silva. Let's get real with Caitlin O'Neill. Don't get salty with Christine Pepper. Better do what she says. It's Elva Enriquez. Can't have a meal without the Emily Sides. Undo your fasteners. It's Aaron Kastner. Nobody holds a candle to Jamie Kendall. She's not harsh. She's Jill Hirsch. We will, we will. Joanna Rockland, you. My favorite murdo karen mcmurdo we love him madly it's kyle pod shadley let's go on a bender with lauren fender she's a good hobby it's lauren hobgood we want to hang with liz lang the incredible edible matthew sisters nancy cease and desisto give him hell miss noel she's the queen bee it's sarah lemke shannon out of a cannon anthony let's take off with tamla plane she ain't no shrinking violet kuchar Hey, Prime members, you can listen to Watch or Crappens ad-free on Amazon Music. Download the Amazon Music app today. Or you can listen ad-free with Wondery Plus in Apple Podcasts. Before you go, tell us about yourself by completing a short survey at wondery.com survey.